All right, welcome to another GIMP beginner tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to go over the basics of using layers in GIMP. Once you get used to using layers, you're going to wonder how you ever got along without them. And uh, once you get used to using layers, you will not want to go back. Okay, so I've got, uh, I've got GIMP up. And let's open up some files. And these are components of an image that I'm going to be using as a thumbnail for a video. So actually this video. So let's go ahead and open up our background, which is an image of GIMP with, the, with an image loaded up. Okay, so this is going to be the background. This is going to be the snapshot, the screenshot, the background for the image, uh, for the thumbnail I'm going to be making for the for this video. All right, so let's open up another component. Another component is going to be my logo. And you'll notice that it's an SVG format. It is a vector format image. GIMP can use vector images just fine. So we're going to load that one up too. And one more component. We'll open up another component, and that is the chroma key overlay that I'm going to be using for that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I don't want to alter the original image components that I'm using for this project. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to save it. I'm going to save as, and I am going to save as uh, in GIMP's default image format, which is XCF. I always save my image files when I'm manipulating them or editing them in GIMP's native format. And then when I'm, when I'm completed, I will export them into whatever format, image format that I want to. So we're going to call this Layers Tutorial. All right. All right, so now... If you look over here, you just currently you see one layer, right? And if let's say I grab my logo and I go up here and I select edit and I select copy. And then I'm going to go back to my original photo here. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to say edit and I'm going to say paste. Okay, so now I've got my move tool selected over here in the top left hand corner. So uh, let me move my layers dialog over here to the right so that you guys will be able to see everything. I'll pull this out a little bit so you can see it. All right, so now I have an opportunity to move my logo wherever I want it located on the image. So let's say I want it in the lower right-hand corner. Okay, so I've got it positioned there. And right now I just have the single layer, layer and it's showing a floating point floating section. I haven't anchored it yet. So if I go down here where you see this little boat anchor and I select anchor it. Okay, so I still I still have the single layer in the image. You can see that. So what happens if I decide, you know what, maybe I would rather have that logo over in the left lower left hand corner than the lower right hand corner. Well, well now it's part of that original layer. It's part of the image. So now I can't really do anything with it. So let me go ahead and undo that. Okay, now I'm going to go back and I'm going to select my logo again. I'm going to go up, I'm going to select edit, and I'm going to select copy. And then I'm going to go back to my original image again, which is going to be my background for the image. And I'm going to right click, and I'm going to go to edit, and I'm going to say paste as, I'm going to say paste as a new layer. Boom. Now if you look over here in the layers dialog, you see not one, but two layers now instead of just the one. And I don't have to anchor it. It's a layer all of its own. I've still got my move tool selected. So I can bring this logo over and yeah, let's say we'll put it over here in the lower right hand corner again. Okay. Now let's say I decide, you know what? I'd really rather have that logo over in the left-hand corner. What to do? All right, so I go back up and I select my layer that has my logo. And you can see it's outlined in yellow here. It shows it's selected. I've still got my move tool selected. So now I grab it and I move it over 
to the lower left hand corner. I like that a lot better. And since it's not it's not part of my background image, all I have to do is select it and I can still move it wherever I want to. Not a problem. If I decide if I change my mind and want to move it somewhere else, if I want to scale it, make it larger or make it smaller, this is where the power of layers comes in. Okay, so now we've got that. Now I want to go over to my third component, which is my um, chroma key image. Everything is transparent except for my image in the lower right hand corner. So I'm going to go up, I'm going to say edit, and I'm going to say copy, and I'm going to go back over to my original image that has my background that I want, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to say edit, and I'm going to paste as a new layer. And so now, since I still have my move tool selected, I can grab that layer, and I can move it over here in the lower right hand corner of that image. Or maybe I want it in the middle. We'll put it over here in the middle. Nah, I changed my mind. I'm going to go back over to the right again. But the layers, using different components of your image as individual layers, gives you the freedom to change your mind and and move it scale it apply filters to it without affecting your background or any other components it's fantastic uh, for making composites of your images and this is going to turn out to be a pretty good thumbnail being able to do it that way all right so one other thing that i want to show you is sometimes when you've got different components on the screen you may not have the proper layer selected. Like right now, my background is selected. Let's say I'm not paying attention, and this happens frequently, where I'm not paying attention to what layer I have selected. And I think, you know what, I want to I want to move this, I want to move this over here around a little bit. But let's say I don't quite put the cursor on it and I grab I grab the bottom layer. Now, now I've got the wrong component that I'm moving around. I've got to undo that. So I'm gonna select edit. I'm going to say undo move layer, put it back where it was. What I could do, and what I do frequently when I'm working on different layers of an image to basically protect the image from my mistakes, is if you look up here at the top, it has a lock. It has lock, and it says lock pixels. It says lock position and size, and lock your alpha channel, which is your transparency channel. Well, I want to make sure I don't move this, and I want to make this bottom layer, my my uh, background layer, I want to make sure that I'm not going to move it, and I'm not uh, accidentally going to apply a filter to it, because I might not be paying attention and not have the right layer selected. So if I have this layer selected, and I go up and I select lock pixels, and I select lock position and size, now if I grab that bottom layer and try to move it, it's not going to go anywhere. So I have protected that bottom layer. And then I could say, okay, what's going on? How come this isn't moving? Oh, I've got the wrong layer selected again. So I go back up my chroma key layer, and I can grab it, and I can move it again. I can move it wherever I want. It doesn't matter. Um, what else could I do to it? I could scale it. Let's see if we scale it. I make it smaller, I can make it bigger, and I'm not affecting any of the other components of the image, right? So I'm gonna go reset, I'm not gonna resize that. Back to my move tool and put it back where I had it before, which is actually where I want it. Right over here on the right hand edge, right there. Okay, so don't forget, the, the la using layers gives you the freedom to adjust your image components later on any way you want. Save it in GIMP's native format. When you're happy with everything, you know, export it into your final format, your image format, whether it's a JPEG, PNG, BMP, whatever. But don't touch your original XCF file that you worked so hard on to get everything set up just the way you want it in case you decide to go back later on 
and do some more editing to it. Make sure that you protect your layers to prevent you from making an accident, making an adjustment on a layer that you didn't mean to. Once you get that layer set up the way you want it, protect it so you don't accidentally move it or scale it or resize it or apply a filter to it accidentally. All right, so that's the basics of using layers in the GIMP. As I publish additional videos, tutorial, tutorial videos, we'll go more in depth in all the aspects of GIMP. But first I want to give you the basics and then we'll build from there. So stay tuned for the next episode. I'll see you then.